friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. With Capone here, you can't see him, but <laughs> he just looked at me. We'll make sure we get a shot of him in here. Uh, every week I probably get dozens of questions from all of you about RV living, being a digital nomad, I mean you name it, everything under the sun I get questions about from on email, personal messages, private messages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, comments, and uh, it's impossible for me to keep up with all of the questions. I try to answer as many as I can and I appreciate all the questions but unfortunately I'm not able to answer all of them. So one of the things that I have started doing is keeping them in a file, which I have right here. And instead of just doing a regular Q&A today, and I thought this would be really fun to actually read mail from you and do videos on it. And in the meantime, or in the process, answer uh, some of the questions I get asked mo most often about RV living, boondocking, and all kinds of things. Uh, so I have three questions for you today that I'm going to answer. Number one, I'm going to talk about how I get water. That question comes up a lot. I like to boondock. I don't stay in RV parks, so so what do I do for water? And in answering that, I'm going to talk about emptying my black and gray tanks because that question comes up too. And number two is when I first started out, what did I think I was going to need that I didn't need and what do I wish I had bought or brought with me that I had to buy along the way? Number three uh, can you give us some tips for how to drive a big RV? Uh, I get that a lot. There's a little bit of a learning curve to it, so I'm going to give you some things that I have learned. <laughs> I don't know, for better or for worse, I'll have to give you a tour around Matilda. You can see all the duct tape uh, and how I learned how to drive her. And then finally, I'm going to answer a personal question. I get a lot of those, <laughs> and I'm not going to answer all of them, but I thought it would be fun to answer one every once in a while, and today I'm going to answer probably one I get, I get asked quite a bit. So stay tuned for that at the end. All right, let's get started. My first question today is from Fast Lane Dan. And Fast Lane, Fast Lane Dan writes, I'm a retired person. I have a Class C. I RV part-time and I would like to boondock more. And the biggest obstacle for me is where do I get fresh water? How and where do you fill your fresh water tank when boondocking? For me, the easiest way to fill my 33-gallon fresh water tank is to fill it up when I dump my tanks. Uh, so that was the second question, how often do I dump my tanks? I think I've gone about two weeks before I've had to dump my black and my gray water. Uh, I measured them one time because I couldn't find it anywhere, so I actually got underneath and measured. And I think my black tank was about 30 gallons and my gray tank was a little less or vice versa. So I have like almost double the capacity in my, when you, I have almost the double capacity of my black and gray versus my fresh. So I've gone two weeks without dumping my black and my gray, but I, I suspect I, caught, I could go longer. My sensors don't work, so I have no idea in any given time how full they are. <laughs> uh, but I dump them about every two weeks because I usually run out of water about every two weeks. And that is where I get my fresh water. If you look at SantaDumps.com, that's one of the ones, I think there's a couple, you can Google apps for finding dump stations and Santa Dumps, there's another one, I can't remember, I'll put it up in the description here, is one that I use and it tells me in my area, it's, I think you, it's a GPS, it knows where you are, find a dump station near me or some, just Google that, find a dump station near me. Most dump stations have fresh water and of course, yes, you have to pay and most dump stations, I think I pay about $10. So either find a dump station at a campground, at an RV park, Gas stations oftentimes will have dump stations, sometimes city um, water and garbage districts. I think I found one, where was I? I think it was in California. I found one actually at the water sanitation place. They had a dump station uh, for a donation. Also in Oregon, all over Oregon, they were, the cities had them by fire stations and uh, all kinds of different government buildings. And it was donation, You, you they, had a box and you could make a donation and so that is where I have been able to fill my tanks and I actually have a hose it hooks up to a uh, you know a spigot or whatever and then feeds it into my my uh, my fresh water tank so that's how I do it I find some place where I can buy water some of the other things that you can do are 
uh, rest areas in, I think it was Nevada, the rest areas actually had, what are they called? Water outlets, water thingies. <laughs> You know, I used to be able to speak English. I don't know what happened to all the words I used to know. Um, but uh, yeah, so in Nevada, I was able to find fresh water and I could, I could actually hook up my hose and fill up my RV with their fresh water. And some of the other places, if you are, if you can't find a, um, a water source like those where you can actually hook up a hose. I have also used the paid water machines like the Glacier water machines outside of grocery stores. They're anywhere from 25 cents to 40 cents a gallon and you just carry one gallon buckets and I have a funnel and if I have to I fill up my water tank with that uh, from the side of my RV. And the, you can also, I had a collapsible I had, a, I had a collapsible five gallon bucket one time and uh, I, one time, <laughs> one time I filled that in a machine and tried to fill my RV <laughs> tank with it. That didn't go very well. It was heavy. I didn't have a funnel. I, I wasted half of it. Uh, but that is another thing you can do. Just get a five gallon collapsible. That way when you're not using it, it doesn't take up a lot of space and carry one gallon buckets or whatever. So the paid glacier water stations are also another really good source. I also know people who have just pulled up to fire stations and asked. Gas stations often have fresh water. Of course, you don't want to use the stuff that comes out of the black tube that you fill radiators with. You don't know how potable that is. Uh, but uh, where was I just recently? Nevada? No, Arizona, I think. Uh, there was a gas station there that actually had an RV fill-up station in the back. They had a hose for fresh drinking water for RVs. If you think about it, how much do we spend on gas? <laughs> it would behoove them to give us services to attract us there to fill up our gas tanks, right? And uh, so those are a couple of the places that I have used and some that I have heard that you can find fresh water. And uh, there was one more, laundry mats. Uh, people actually take thought I just heard somebody. People actually take their water jugs, uh, again, get like a collapsible bladder and go into public restrooms. I, I don't know. This th That doesn't feel quite right to me. People do that. Uh, but you can take a, a water jug into a, a convenience store or a fast food bathroom. You could fill them up in there. I've heard of people doing that. Uh, or you can, there was one more. Oh, laundry mats. Sometimes you can just ask at a laundromat if there's somebody there or if they just have a sink, you can fill it up there. That's how I get water. Again, usually I just um, have, oh, a white hose. I guess I'll have to show you that. You have to buy a special, well, they say you have to buy a special drinkable water hose. You don't want to use a garden variety, <laughs> green garden hose because it'll leach chemicals out of there that aren't good to be ingested. So you are going to want to get a special drinkable white water hose. I keep it in one of my storage bins and I, I, I screw it on when I'm at a water source and just fill up my 33 gallon water tank with it. And that's how I get water. Question number two from Ari. What items did you think you would need when starting out and found that you didn't? Clothes. Have I mentioned clothes? <laughs> I think I've mentioned clothes a lot. I am still getting rid of clothes. Uh, so clothes is one thing that I bought. Uh, I also bought a, a, a Camping World. Stay away from Camping World when you first buy your RV. I bought a magnetic dog dish set. It was like a magnet place a magnet placemat with a little steel doggy bowl, I guess, that so it didn't slide around. I haven't. I don't know if I ever used it. I don't even know where it is now. But I didn't need that. The first time I went into Camping World, <laughs> I was at the checkout and he's like, ah, a new RVer. <laughs> I was like, is it that obvious? And just kitchen stuff that I bought. I bought my Ninja Blender. I think I've used it once for one thing, boondocking. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. I can use it if I use run my generator, but I haven't. I thought I'd be make, still be making my kale protein shakes every day and, and I haven't needed to. Uh, and my food dehydrator. I, I, I knew not to bring my food dehydrator. That thing needs to be plugged in for like 24 hours, 12 to 24 
hours to dehydrate your food. And as a boondocker, that doesn't really work. But I thought, well, if I ever go on another long backpacking trip, another long through hike, and I want to make my food again, I could always stay in an RV park and plug in. So I'm still carrying that thing around. But basically, a lot of the pots and pans that I brought, and I've said this before, the kitchen gadgets that I brought, the clothes, the books, uh, things like that. What items did I need that I didn't think I was going to need? Levelers. You know, those those tire levelers. So I don't have built-in hydraulic leveling jacks on my RV. And I didn't buy them at first, I don't think, because I was like, yeah, I'm not going to need them. Well, you do need them. For one thing, I need to keep my refrigerator as level as I can. Uh, so I did have to go out and buy some good levelers. Actually, I'm borrowing my friend Bob's right now. The big yellow ones are better than the stackable. Actually, the, yeah, the stackable red ones are the ones I bought. And they're okay. Uh, but they're already starting to kind of get flattened out. They don't seem to last as long. And uh, so I did need some levelers. I'm really just trying to keep things as minimalist as possible and not buy anything I don't need. Uh, everything, I I did a lot of research before I bought the RV. I, I think I pretty much had things nailed down as far as accessories. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. Okay, question number three from Lori. Can you give me some tips for driving a big RV? <laughs> yeah, don't run into stuff. <laughs> That's how I learned how to drive my RV. I bought an old beat up RV knowing damn well that I was gonna ruin it. Uh, learn how to use your mirrors. Be really good at learning how to back up just by using your mirrors. Also, the back window, I used to have one of those square things in the back window that helps microscopic or something I don't know the back so that you could see better that fell off and it, I never replaced it and the only thing that really helped me see was down below because you can't see out the back window you can only see up you can't see like the road behind you and that helped me see the road behind me which was really helpful backing up is probably though driving it actual driving it is not that hard it's backing up it's being in the forest one of the things that was the hardest for me to get used to was the vertical clearance and how high i am uh, what did i break the antenna of uh, the tv antenna was the first thing to come off my roof because i didn't realize trees <laughs> were just <laughs> scraping on my roof and tearing stuff off i've gotten a lot of crap for saying this before but whatever it's who i am one of the things that I have always done, even in my brand new former car, that's why I had a couple dings in it, is I kind of feel my way backing up. If I, if I couldn't see, and I'm driving a big box, I can't see everything behind me, I'd kind of inch in, inch in, inch in, inch in until I tapped something. Especially, and I got myself in a lot of really, really tight situations where I had to do multiple point turns to get out on narrow dirt roads with cliffs on one side. I, I've been in some pretty scary situations. So yeah, I needed every inch and sometimes I would push it. I'd, I'd have to back up way into the trees. And so, and I've joked about this before, RVs are made so inexpensively that even tapping a branch or a snowbank, I mean, literally, I'm not running into it, we're inching into it, shit just falls off. Literally, shit falls off. I mean, it was crazy, I couldn't believe it. So, I have a hole in my back, I have, my bumper fell off, quarter panels broke off, and so I recommend not inching and not, <laughs> not tap testing to run into things. One of the things that I do a lot is I get out and look around when I'm backing up. Sometimes if I have to do it five times until I get backed into a spot, I will get out every time, make sure I know everything that's around me, every tree, both vertically, horizontally, every tree that's around me, and uh, just inch my way in if I have to into a parking spot or a, a camping spot or through a forest. And vertical clearance is the one thing I will say if you've never driven an RV before, that's probably the, the biggest thing that you have to get used to, at least for me. My old car kind of sat low and it was kind of big and boxy, so I kind of got used to that was, you know, kind of bumping into things in that car. And, uh, and I do that a lot. I did that a lot in the RV. Um, but so vertical clearance, getting out, looking around, 
get a backup mirror if or a backup camera if that makes you feel better it would really help you see but make sure we have a habit from driving cars of looking down and that's where a lot of my damage has come I look down when I look in my mirrors and I look around I look down toward the road you know the driveway or the ground to make sure I'm not hitting anything and where some of my damage has come in is forgetting to look up what trees what branches are going to get in the way of me getting where I need to go above you know and um, like I said I poked a hole in the back because I hit a branch that I didn't see because I forgot to look up okay so to summarize <laughs> tips for driving a big RV use your mirrors get really good at using your mirrors get out look around as many times as you have to when you're backing into a spot don't forget to look up when you're looking in your rearview mirrors if you're in the forest look up to see what obstacles might be up we're trained to look down make sure you look up and get a backup uh, camera if that really if that helps you I don't have one I, I feel like I don't need one really too much at this point how much more damage can I do uh, but a uh, backup camera really helps a lot okay so thank you Lori, Ari, and Dan for the questions. I appreciate it. If any of you who are watching have questions, please keep sending them to me and I'll do this every once in a while. I will read your comments and your questions directly and answer them in a video. And finally, uh, let's answer the personal question of the day. The personal question, close your ears Capone, <laughs> that I get a lot is why don't you get a puppy? Oh my gosh, I, I, so many of you are concerned about me because Capone is over 12 and um, yeah, I can't think about that. And so people say, get a puppy, Capone can train him, it'll help Capone and it'll help you through the process. So why don't you just get a puppy? Well, I appreciate everybody's suggestions and everybody's concerns and thoughtfulness. However, uh, my life almost in some ways feels a little bit on hold right now. I want to travel more internationally, maybe even live abroad. I've looked at the Peace Corps. Yeah, as someone asked me, are you age appropriate? Yes, they take people of all ages. And in fact, they are even looking for uh, marketing, uh, marketing entrepreneurs to teach marketing to business owners in developing countries. That is something that may be on the horizon for me. Uh, I'm not sure, and I definitely want to do another through hike. I want to do more backpacking and having a dog, close your ears Capone, limits me a little bit. I love this guy to death and he's now older so I am limited in the things that I want to do, especially living in an RV. And that was one thing I think I didn't consider. When I lived in the Bay Area, if I wanted to go somewhere, my ex-husband would take him. We kind of shared custody that way. If he was going on vacation and he wanted Capone, I'd let him take him. And, and when I wanted to go out of town or go backpacking or travel or go to Greece for two and a half weeks, he would take Capone. And I don't have that anymore. I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> if I want to go somewhere... I don't have a babysitter for Capone. Uh, so for better or for worse, Capone and I are kind of stuck together. And uh, as much as I love him and love having a dog in my life, uh, there's a lot that I want to do. There, uh, there's a lot that I, I need to get out of my system before I commit myself to another pet. So that's why I'm not getting a puppy. I also ser seriously, and I know people don't agree with me on this, I don't want to, that just kind of feels like, sad for Capone. It's like, okay, Capone, I know you're going to die soon, so I've got your replacement here already. Will you train him? I, that just, <laughs> I know I'm being silly, but that's what it feels like. And I just feel like Capone, oh, oh, I, like I owe Capone everything. Oh, geez. I just feel like I owe Capone um, one hundred percent of me while he's here. Um, who knows how many years we have left together? And um, I just want to give him my undivided attention, and uh, maybe not bring another puppy into the mix. So that's why I don't get a puppy, and that's why um, it's just Capone and me for now. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. I hope that this video has been helpful and informative and gives you some ideas to inspire you to get out on the road and follow your dreams and as always i just am so grateful for all of you who support me and encourage me and a couple of you you know who you are who um 
give me pep talks <laughs> when I need them the most. And I am grateful for you. So thank you all so much for being on this wonderful adventure with me. And we'll see you soon. And in the meantime, remember to be happy, be free, and please be kind. Thank you.